I'm out in the backyard, um, my five acres on a state forest here. I made a campsite in the back of the property. I got this little fire pit down here. Actually, I took a, uh, what do they call them, uh, I guess it's, it's a fire, fire pit. One of those, um, freestanding metal bowl things that you use to get fires in your backyard to put around the patio. Well, the one I got ended up rotting out, and, uh, I ended up finding a use for it. I took the, the bowl from the bottom of it, dug out my my fire pit down here, and put the bottom bowl under there. And then over here, if you can see it. Hold on. We got the uh, the top part. It's just a just a big bowl. See there. And that's what you use to cap it off. We came with the uh, original grills too. We can see those. Here's one of them right here. It's got two of those. So usually when I get it going, I burn it down enough where I can put the grills back on the top here. And then uh, you can keep all the ashes in there. I'm not worried about it today. It's been raining almost constantly for the last week or so on and off with thunderstorms. This time of year in southern New England there's uh, always a lot of thunderstorms out midday, late day and uh, everything was pretty soaked. So I ended up being able to find some dry stuff. If you, if you know where to look, even after it's been raining for a long time, you can find yourself some dry stuff to get the wood going, usually a little kindling and stuff. I started off with, down on, behind me, down the, one of the trails I have in my yard here, uh, the last big storm we had last, I think it was October, that, uh, was it Irene, Hurricane Irene, well it knocked a bunch of oaks over in my yard, and they, a lot of them came resting on other trees, so the branches were kind of held up in the air, and then the leaves dried out on them and died. But they, if you break off those branches that are off the ground but below the canopy, they're usually really bone dry. So I started off because my uh, the bowl, the bowl on the bottom of this thing had uh, water in it, so I had to scrape that out. I tried to drill some holes in to let it drain, but it's just into the dirt, so it doesn't really drain too well. So I cleaned it out, but it was still damp. One of the best things to do with that, I had some uh, some charred up wood that I had from last time. If you just line the bottom where the wet area is with uh, with things like that, any kind of wood actually doesn't have to be the charred wood, but that makes a nice platform to get your base fire going. And Because uh, if you just try to light the fire on that wet surface on the bottom, it's going to draw up all that all that dampness and put the fire right out by making the platform as you can see here it allows it to get going and, and burn all the water off from inside the wood before before the uh, the dampness can put it out so right now it's it's actually drying itself out the big pieces of wood that I have up top here if you can see those uh, those were actually pretty damp I had them in a pile over past my uh, my day pack over there. I don't know if you can see that, but I had them stacked in in layers. A couple going this way, going this way, going this way. Made a little uh, tower of them. So I took the stuff in the middle. Obviously, the stuff on the very top was wet. The stuff sitting on the ground is wet, but the stuff in the middle is just damp. It wasn't that bad. And I mean, we literally had some flash flooding and stuff two days ago, but. You can see that didn't stop this thing from going. If you do any fire right, it doesn't matter um, if it's been raining or not. If you know what to look for, use a little um, bush common sense, outdoor common sense. Um, you can find stuff that's that's fine that you'll be able to to get something going with. Another good source after, like I said, the uh, falling over oaks with the dried leaves on the branches, snapping a bunch of those off, putting those on the bottom. And then the next layer I like to do, I don't know if you can, now you probably can't see it over here, 
and I'll show you. Again, these are, uh, this is a mountain laurel bush. You can probably not see it in behind me here. I'm trying my best to, uh, yeah, you can see it now a little bit. This mountain laurel bush right here, if you go to the bottom, not the part on the ground, but kind of, I don't know, a foot, foot and a half off the ground, the way mountain laurels grow, new branches shoot up, and then anything under that, because those new branches with the leaves are blocking out the sun, so the stuff underneath starts to die off, but it doesn't fall off the tree. It just sits up there and, uh, and dries out. So you can usually just snap it right off, and because the the way of the leaves, it stops those bottom branches from getting wet. So again, they're not on the ground where the ground's wet. They're not up in the canopy where the canopy's wet, but they're somewhere in the middle. And just snap off a bunch of those because they're they're a little bit thicker than uh, than some of the stuff with the the branches with the oak leaves on them. So that'll that'll keep it going a little longer. And uh, once you get those going with some, even with some damp wood like I had here, eventually if you put enough of that base on there, the, the mountain laurels and oak will dry off the bigger stuff that's damp on top of it. And uh, the end result is right here. You get this going. And once I got it going, this wasn't several attempts or anything. This is my first shot and, uh, and it started going now. That on top there. That was my first attempt, and uh, it shot right up. Now everything you can hear the sizzling probably on the camera here. All that sizzling is the rest of the the water in the wood burning off as it's combusting. And uh, I actually got another neat little thing. My buddy TJ, when we were summiting Mount Washington last year in August, um, he had a. Uh, a stool, a camping stool that folded up and you could put it on your pack and the one he had I think was the, it looked just like this but it had like steel poles so it was heavier I got one right here I don't know if you can see that, yeah there we go there's a good angle see what I mean, it's got the, the tripod and in the middle here and it just folds out and it's got this this top that you sit on right there but this one's made out of aluminum it's called uh, walk stool and the nice thing about this is these legs are telescopic they actually go in half the bottom parts of them right where they the pivot point here in the middle those close up into the top part and then there's there's this strap here that you just wrap around it once it's closed up. I'll show you that later on. Um, but that makes it small. It's lightweight because it's the aluminum one and uh, it's compact. So you can fit it in your pack or hang it on your pack on the bottom. But when you're out there in for a couple days doing mountain hikes or even just um, woodland hikes anywhere out there, after a while, sitting on stumps, sitting on rocks, that stuff gets old kind of quick. I mean, didn't used to so much, but uh, now I'm now I'm in my early 30s, and when I go out, I, I don't mind carrying the carrying the stuff if it's smart. You know what I mean? Like you leave stuff behind you don't need, take stuff that you do, and I can sacrifice one or two other things to to put this in the pack, and uh, that's just from trial and error of finding different stuff that I've brought, I haven't used. Um, there's the inevitables that you have to have anyway, or you should have if you're a, an avid outdoorsman and smart about it. Like, I have a first aid kit that that's a little bulky, but when you're out in the middle of the woods and there's no ambulances, there's no 911, nothing like that, so you're kind of relying on yourself and your buddies to, if something happens, someone twists an ankle or gets cut up or something. So that's the kind of stuff that you just you have to have anyway. Benadryl, I have Benadryl in there for uh, antihistamine for bee stings, just in case uh, it, it does help bring the, the swelling down and stuff. It could stop an allergic reaction. doesn't guarantee that it will, but it's better than having nothing. Um, so.
So, yeah, I'm going to bring this stool up next time I go to New Hampshire. I'm planning one more of those trips, do a third third summit of uh, Mount Musilaki to try and get up there this time. And um, that's all depending. I'm on the fence about that. It's either going to be Mount Musilaki a third time or the Pemi Wilderness. There's another long trail that follows uh, one of the rivers out there uh, to the, a place called the Thirteen Falls. That's supposed to be a really scenic spot. It's not, it's all level, level grade. There's no uphill, no mountain, no nothing. You're just kind of in the wilderness. But the area is a, it's a 32 square mile area in New Hampshire with no roads. So you, you get your, to your starting point. And I think the 13 Falls is oh, somewhere between, I think, five miles, just over five miles to, to the 13 Falls and then the same amount back. Uh, there are some summits you can do out there if you set up your base camp at the 13 Falls. TJ, I guess, did it with one of his buddies uh, last month. Had a good time. But it's all contingent on whether uh, my buddy Steve and him are going to go. If they're going to go, I'll do Mount Musilaki again. If they're not, I'll do the Pemi Wilderness. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, here's another neat little thing. I think I showed it in one of my other videos right here. Let's see if you can see that. It's a uh, a Yuko like compact lantern that it's a an emergency candle lantern. This thing also is telescopic. It you can just close it up and it it, it goes in half. And uh, there's a little neoprene pouch I have for it to keep it from this is glass to keep that from breaking. This actually isn't that heavy either. It's all aluminum. Uh, the whole thing. The emergency candles are supposed to be nine hour candles. You're supposed to be able to just let them burn straight for nine hours and they, they um, will last that long. It's got this handle on the top here and right up here if you can see I, uh, in my campsite here I put a, this is a uh, sassafras tree. I just put a nail part way in so I'd have something to hang it on but it's got this little hook that wherever you're at you can, you can use a tree branch or whatever if you're in a if you hike your way to a backpacking shelter, you can hike, hang it on something inside the shelter. But last time I brought this to a place that I used it, it actually lit the whole inside of the shelter up really nice. Uh, it would just, it's obviously one candle power, but it's enough to put on a, a little table or something or even a stump and you can play cards by it. It's bright enough for that. Um, yeah, so that's that's another thing that I'd that I'd like to get out there. I didn't bring it last time, but we'll see if I do this time. If I can manage my, my pack a little better and take out some more stuff that I, I haven't used that hopefully I won't need. Things like, I have a multi-tool, but that's kind of heavy. I don't necessarily need that because the, uh, the multi-tool can be replaced by a, a little ingenuity and, and a straight blade knife. If you, if you know what you're doing, you can get some stuff done. Obviously, it's not a substitute for pliers. If you, if you need pliers for something, that's a little trickier to work around. But it, it is possible. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, there's that. This time, like I said, I'm just in my backyard in the woods. And um, I got my, my day pack right here with uh, water bladder and all that on it. I brought... A little uh, water bottle. This one's uh, like 16.9 ounces, something like that. Just a little Cumberland Farms thing. But it, um, I reuse it because it's the perfect size for putting those little powder drinks in. I get the Propel Fitness Waters uh, packets. They're about that big. They're really light. They're, they, you can put them in a little uh, Ziploc bag with your tea and stuff. And... Uh, just dump one in here, fill it up to the top, and, and it's the perfect size for, for the mix that they that they require on the packs. So there's no measuring. You just dump it in, fill it with water, and, and it's the right amount. So, yeah, that's a uh, another thing that I, I packed up this time. Mountain House meals, like always. I don't have those here. I have them at home, up at the house. But today's Sunday. Tomorrow... Uh, I'm off of work. It's a Rhode Island holiday, uh, Victory Day. It, it, it was originally VJ Day, Victory Over Japan. It's the only 
Uh, I think Rhode Island's the only state that still celebrates it. Hawaii did for a while, but I don't even think they do anymore. It was something about uh, remembrance of Pearl Harbor. All the other states dropped it years ago. Um, but yeah, so I don't have to go to work tomorrow, which is Monday, and I just needed some solitude time out here to clear my head. And it's 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 worth it, man. Just such a it's been a long, long work time at my my job. So moments like this, and I got a two-year-old kid up at the house too. He's wearing me ragged. He's a good kid, but man, he wants everything all the time. So uh, once in a while, dad needs some dad time, and this is it. My wife's up at the house in the uh, in the bedroom watching TV or something on her computer. TV shows on her computer. So I just. Uh, Told her I'd be out here for a bit. And yeah. Well, that's about that. Um, nothing spectacular, just out in the backyard. You wouldn't know it if you were out here. If you look around, I mean, I could show you, but <laughs> the camera's black anyway, but you can't see any street lights, any house lights, anything out here. I'm, I think I'm about 500 feet back from my property. Um, the whole thing's like four and three quarter acres, the property, and about an acre of its yard, the other three and three quarters acres is all woods, and it's the long way. And like I said, there's a state forest around me, so if you head south a little further down this way, uh, you'll see the, the state markers, and that's just nothing but woods. 26,000 acres of uh, uninterrupted uh, Patchogue State Forest. So, yeah, this is a nice quiet spot. It's a little bit of a commute to my job, but it's worth it. I love coming home to here. It's just so quiet.